Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. Thank you for joining me for this episode. Today, I'm gonna to talk about my solar setup and specifically solar panels, filling you in on sort of my final build for my electronic system. Let's roll the intro and get into it. This video is sponsored by Renowned Cargo Trailers. Just a quick update before we get started. Behind me is Steve's truck. I've been borrowing this for several weeks since my truck was stolen in Denver, Colorado. Uh, he has given me this for as long as I need to be able to get around and to tow my cargo trailer. And so I'm using it right now um, while my truck's being worked on. Status update on the truck. I talked to the repair shop that's working on it yesterday. They're still trying to find seats for it, having problems there but they did drop batteries into it the other day and they said it starts and drives perfectly no known problems at this point so crossing my fingers there's no more uh, mechanical complications but right now it's looking extremely good for the mechanical aspects the thieves did not monkey with it or do anything to sabotage the engine or the drivetrain or anything mechanically seems to be working perfectly so that's fantastic news they're telling me right now it's probably another two weeks or so before they finish up. They've got to get the seats in there, reupholster things, new carpet, and uh, do a few other repairs. So anyway, crossing my fingers that uh, I'll be getting my truck back here in a couple of weeks. So what's going to be happening with the insurance? I'm not sure. I have to find out once I get the final bill how much insurance is paying for, how much is going to be up to me, and what elements are missing holding on to the GoFundMe money until that point so I can figure out how it all shakes out. And then once I pay off those bills, whatever difference that I need to make things right, uh, to get my truck back to what it was, then I'll be donating the rest of that forward to HAWA, the Homes on Wheels Alliance. Okay, so let's talk solar, let's get into it. Currently I am camped in Colorado, up in the mountains, sort of between Buena Vista and Salida area. And it is gorgeous up here in the mid 70s. Today, getting a little bit of work done here on my cargo trailer. And so today I wanna to show you some stuff about my solar panels. The weather has been so beautiful and nice. I have my ramp down in the back, but I'm at such an angle here that I'm not using it currently as a deck, which is my final intent. I wanna put uh, some sort of leveling jacks or supports under this so that I can use it as deck, maybe eventually put railing and cover the actual wood surface here with something to protect it from the weather. Let's go inside. Right now I have it sort of set up in a build type mode. This is not going to be the final layout. So I have these wonderful shelves that Becky purchased for me with the bend set up. And then I have straps which I use when I'm transporting which go around to hold the bends in place. Right now I have those sort of loosened up so that I can access things as I'm building. Over here I have a pile of construction materials, foam, wood, plywood, all sorts of stuff in this area. And over here on this side I have a temporary setup as well, which I just used one of the spare doors out of one of my rental properties. This one had been destroyed by one of my tenants, had holes in it. So I'm just using this as a temporary countertop so that I'm able to do uh, kitchen stuff cooking. So I've got Berkey water filter here, induction cooktop, uh, my instant pot, coffee pot, and I have a new addition that I bought in Florida, which is, is a microwave and convection oven. So that's sort of going to be a, a nice upgrade to have. Uh, so anyway, this is sort of my little temporary kitchen area. And over here I have my new refrigerator, which I purchased in Florida before I left there. And this is turning out uh, to be absolutely wonderful. It's mostly empty. It's a little bit overkill right now. But I think once I have my final build, it will be fantastic. And this is what we're talking about today. This is my power wall with all of the units and everything that I use for my solar and electronic off-grid system. Up on top, I have a temperature gauge. Shows uh, today's temperature. It is just about 69 degrees right now inside of here and it's probably in the mid 70s outside. Then I have three solar charge controllers. Each of these controls two panels. I have two that are hooked up right now. These here, this is two panels, that's two panels. This one has not yet been hooked up. So you can see the wires going up into the roof here with fuses uh, in line to protect that. Lots of uh, switches to turn things off as I need to. 
And all of this here funnels down into the bus bars, which are down here at the bottom. Over here I have two inverters. I have a 3000 watt inverter, and then I have a dedicated inverter that's used just for my refrigerator. And this is a 1200 watt from Victron. So this has a special eco mode. So my refrigerator is an analog fridge. It does not have the digital displays, just has old school dials inside of it. Let me show you that. And here you can see there's an old school dial and there's no digital displays. Now the reason that's important is because when this uh, turns off, I have absolutely zero power to the fridge until the uh, little mercury switch in there switches and then kicks on this into eco mode, activates it and wakes it up out of sleep mode to give power to the fridge until the compressor turns off and this goes back to sleep. And there's long, long delay, several hours between when the fridge comes on, so that saves tons and tons of power by using this option. Over here, I have a shore power converter. And then down here is a unit that needs to be replaced. This is a uh, 24 to 12 converter, and it's just not doing the job. It's uh, really giving a low voltage. Right here you can see it's only giving uh, 12 volts and that's just not enough. It needs to be like 12.7, 12.8 for it to actually work well with my components. So I'm going to be upgrading this component back here in the very near future. Down at the bottom is a mess of wires. This is my um, custom built lithium battery bank and I'm intending to have three battery banks in here at 24 volts next to each other. I've built two of them right now and you can see two uh, DALI um, BMS units, those are new. This is the battery management unit and it uh, controls all the individual cells to make sure they're all balanced exactly perfectly. And then this feeds all up to a Victron smart controller here. This is a shunt and this gives me uh, very, very accurate readings to Bluetooth and to a special little dial unit. But anyway, so I've got 400 amp hours of lithium batteries. This is absolutely amazing. I rarely, rarely go below 95% here. So let's go outside and get on top of the roof and show you the solar panels. Up here you can see the six panels. I've got them in sets of two. And each of these panels are hinged. So I can tilt them left or right. I've not yet set up the actual props to hold them in position. But primarily this is for winter use when uh, the sunlight is really low if I need extra power. Um, probably won't need that, but I did want to have the capability just in case. So anyway, I've got these attached up here, a total of six panels. Each of these panels is rated for 385, but the interesting thing that I found is that they're around 400, slightly over watts each in the power they're giving. For the first week or two, I had only two of the panels hooked up and they were kicking out well over 800 watts, like 805, 810, 811. So I know that these panels are kicking out 400 watts each plus. So they're performing extremely, extremely well. These are Jinko panels rated for uh, 385. The Jinko panels were reviewed on another YouTube channel by Will Prouse, and he reviewed a whole bunch of different panels, and in particular reviewed these, and they had horrific, terrible reviews. And the reason was, and I found this out from Santan Solar where he purchased them from, there was a defective lot, and fortunately he got the defective units. The back side of the panels have a little plastic uh, controller unit that the wires are attached to uh, that go out the uh, MC4 cables. Those units are called diodes and his were defective and so he had defective diodes in his batch. Apparently Santan Solar sent replacement units out to him and I have all new diodes on the back of mine. I can see they're brand new, new uh, adhesive all around them and so these are performing spectacularly well, way above the specs, uh, closer to 400 uh, plus watts each. What that means is I have six panels of 400 watts, that's 2.4 kilowatts uh, at least minimum of power. So the question is, why so much power? I obviously don't need that for my lithium battery bank. Well, it's because in the future I'm planning on putting a split AC uh, heat pump on here. 
I won't actually be using it for the heat side of it, but I do want to be able to use it for solar powered AC and uh, this will give me plenty of power to run that during the day and keep my batteries topped off so that I can go through the night if need be, especially once I fill in the last third bank of my lithium batteries. So that's the solar setup. I'm going to put links down below in case you're interested in any of these items. These are Amazon affiliate links for the most part. So I get a slight kickback if you happen to uh, purchase any of those products. So that's all I have for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Savor the moment, and I'll see you in a future episode.